We are on. Welcome. Welcome to my class. We're, I'm broadcasting from Spot Israel live. Bear with me. I'm on very little sleep, so I might do some weird things. But just know that we're going to learn very deep Kabbalah about how we're going to fix the world. About the meaning of life. Everything. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Any questions. So, who here has ever heard of the Ram Hall? I think I see you. Have you, you there, sir? In the middle box, have you heard of the Ram Hall? And on the right box? Yeah. Yes. So, this is Rabbi. You know? Yeah, okay. Rabbi Moshe Chaim Luzatu in Italy. A few hundred years ago, this man was not normal. At a young age, he had memorized the entire Torah including all of the Kabbalah, and by 14 years old, I believe. By the time he was 20, he was learning with an angel the deepest secrets, and he revealed a lot of stuff. He took a lot of the Arizal's teachings that were very complicating and made it much more simple to understand. So, we're going to learn from Halach Pitke Chachma. This is the 138 openings of wisdom. What's up? You want to talk? Yeah. I think Russell, I think you have like a lot of background noise. Maybe if you just put yourself on mute. Oh, unless you have a question, good idea. That'll make it a lot better. Good idea. Okay. Russell, okay. if you have any questions, just oh, that's better. I don't have to yell now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now we have peace. So <laughs> it's okay, Russell. If you have any questions, just uh, text me, <laughs> message me. Can you type in this group? Can you send them? I think you can, right? I'm pretty sure you can in the top left corner, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah, I just sent a couple. I got messages. it. I got it. I got it. Mute yourself. <laughs> okay, let's do it. So, if you need, if you have any questions, just send a message. Okay. All right. So these are the 138 opens of wisdom by the Ramchal, and the opening one, Petach Aleph, Yehud Ha'ein Sof Baruchu, the infinite being, blessed be He, is completely unified. This is talking about God. Now, we're not talking about the God that most people think about when they say, I'm atheist, I don't believe in God. I agree, I don't believe in that God either. I believe in the real God, the Ein Sof Baruch Hu, one of those awesome names to call him by. The infinite being, blessed be he. Because this is, a, this is a, a being that we can't understand. It's completely infinite, beyond our comprehension. And we are being told here, he's completely unified. It's not like there's this, this guy here doing this, and then there's that guy over there. And then there's this good and that bad, and that's not like that. Everything's totally unified. One. Sherak Ritsono Yitbrakhu Hanimsa. And only his will is found. No other will besides his is found. Ain Shumratsona Hernimsa. I said that. Ella Mimenum. So there's another will, but it's found. Oh, can who? Levado Sholet, the low Shumratson Acher. And therefore, only he is in control and no other will. The all you sold ze, the new habanim. And on this foundation is built the whole structure of everything. So every, everything in the Kabbalah, everything in all of creation, says in a comment here, Shehan Hanitzalim, Hanivalim, Habanimagad, Achad. Uh, everything, everything that's emanated and created, everything, the whole governing of the whole creation is based on this. That God is in control and there's no other will but His. So that mean, what does this mean, guys? This means that in every person, in every moment, every situation, every place, no matter what, it's God's will. God's in control. He's behind it. So you, you can say, okay, yeah, I believe that, I believe that. But except for that guy over there. What he just said, no, no way. I don't like him. That's not good. That's not God. Or look at that evil thing that happened there. That's so evil. That's clearly not God there. That's a separate power. Not true. Everything is the will of God. He's in control of absolutely everything. Know this. This is the foundation of the Kabbalah. Okay. This is Petach Bet, second one. Ritzono shel hamatzi eli parakshmo huratov. Oh. Okay, that's very important information. The will of the emanator, his name he blessed, is... Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Internet connection lost. One second. 
Anyways, we were saying, Ratzon Hashel Amatzil Yitbarak Shmo Hurak Tov. His will, oh, that's right. Did I even get to say what it was? It cut me out right before I could translate that, right? That's very interesting. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Didn't want me to say that. So I'm going to say it anyway. The will of the emanator, may his name be blessed, is only good. <laughs> it's only good. That's what we said. So, Belechen Yitkayem Shum Davar Elatovam. Sorry, did I just miss the word? Belechen Lo Yitkayem Shum Davar Elatova. And therefore, nothing can exist at all except for good, except for his good. So everything and every moment, no matter what's going on, no matter whatever happened, was the will of God, and it was good. That's the big secret there. So now we're th you might think, oh, but wait, I suffer, and these terrible things happen. I saw evil. I know evil things happen, and it's really bad. And so it's true. If there's evil, it says in the scripture that he creates good and evil, light and darkness. He creates it all. But, uh, so it's not that it's not evil, but it's that it has a good purpose. And really, Kabbalistically, it's actually, it is good. You just can't see it. It's concealed. It's concealed good. And so, later on in this book, I don't know how much time we'll have tonight, but we'll learn how it's a temporary thing, this whole thing of having the other side. It's a very temporary thing of having evil and suffering. And it has a good purpose. And when things are evil, um, you have to have a muna, you have to have faith that it's really good. It's really for the good. It's a very difficult thing to do. And, okay, so let's finish this part right here. So, the kol ma shehu rad and everything that seemingly evil in the beginning, eno yotze mereshut achas v'shalom. It does not come from a different domain, another domain, God forbid. That's able to to um, to oppose him. But in the end of everything, uh, this there's going to be only certainly only good. It's going to be good. And then we'll know that there is no other domain but him. There's nothing else in control but him. So now, again, it's so hard to understand how certain very evil things can be only from God and good. But try to think of it like this. Let's say, uh, you could say, uh, take a picture or a tapestry, whatever, a picture. Let's say, uh, let's say a tapestry right now and zoom in on it a lot, like with a microscope. You're going to just see threads, different colored threads. And you're going to be like, what is this? It makes no sense to me. I think it looks bad. That's a bad picture, right? But then the guy who wove it's like, what is this guy talking about? Why doesn't he zoom out on it? And look at it from my point of view. I wove it. And then you, if you zoomed out to the point of view of the guy who wove the whole tapestry, like, whoa, that's a really nice picture. I understand why that part was there now. I can see it. I get it now from this point of view. But when I'm all zoomed in, I just see this nasty looking threads. So same with this, from God's point of view, he knows what's going on, he's in control, he knows what we need, and he is, knows what's good and what's best for us, and knows what needs to happen. So he's, and that's what's, and that's what's going on. And we're zoomed all the way in, all the way in, we're seeing, you can say with the picture too, pixels, you just see pixels that make no sense, or that look bad, but really, if you zoom out, see the whole picture, you'd say, okay, that makes sense to me now. So in this state of consciousness of a finite being here in a human body, we cannot understand the infinite mind of God. And he reveals to us in his Torah, his Kabbalah, what's really going on. And so we need to have faith. It's all for God. So let's see the next opening, shall we? So, Tachlit Briyata Olamho. So, the whole purpose of this creation, of this world, the Hyot Metiv, is to be uh, doing good. Do it good. 
כפי חשקו הטוב בתכלית הטוב. According to his good desire to bestow the ultimate good. Okay, so that's the whole purpose of everything. This is the meaning of life, completely. Is that God wanted, he wanted to, uh, is the infinite being, and he wanted to give all this goodness he has to give, which we can't even comprehend how pleasurable, how good that is. We can't understand that right now. That's the point, though. He wanted to have a creature, something that could receive it all. He wanted to be able to give it to something that could receive all of this good. So, um, you, then you'd say, okay, well then how come we're suffering right now? Why is that? And all this stuff, like we just explained, you know, it's all part of the plan. Because if he had made, let's say he made a creation that it had no evil, no other side, no temptation, nothing like that. We just immediately were in the state of where we're receiving all of the goodness he wants to give. But then we learn, like it says in here, in a comment right here, all the good, the ultimate good. What is this? The Hainu Begilui Yehudo. The ultimate good, the ultimate pleasure is it mean, is the revelation of his unity. It's a revelation of God. We come to learn in the Kabbalah that the highest pleasure there is is revelation of God. And so we want to have that. And we can't really understand that fully right now, but there's no pleasure greater than this. You can so we learn that uh, outside of time and space, you um, if you want to get to know something, have revelation of it. You have to, you can't like physically go over close. There's no, it's not physical. So we learned that you need to uh, be similar to it. And when you're similar to it, you can come closer to it. The more similar you are, the more one you are, the more revelation of the other that you have in the spiritual realm. So since we know that uh, the highest pleasure is revelation of him, how do we get that? To be more similar to him. Okay. And so if he had made it all without any evil or anything, we were just sitting there receiving all of this amazing pleasure. At some point in infinity, what would happen? We would say, God, I think I could get more pleasure. I think I could have more revelation of you. I want to be more one with you. I want to be more similar to you. You're constantly giving and I'm just receiving. But I want to give. I didn't choose to do this. You chose of your own free will to make a creation and give all this good. And I didn't choose to receive it. I didn't choose anything. I'm not so one with you, am I? And so he'd be like, oh, uh, are you sure? Are you sure you want to do that? Because then you know, you're going to have to have this whole, mm, this messy world and all of this evil to give you free will to choose it. And you'd be like, of course, of course. You're in such a high state of consciousness. Yeah, give me that. I want to do whatever it takes. So we actually, if our highest part of ourself, we, would, we want this. We want everything. We have total faith in God, and we want everything to be how it's going, happening right now. It's always been, including all the suffering and evil, in order for us to get to this state where we worked hard and we chose to get into a state of consciousness and a state of service, a state of giving, and be one with God, and have the ultimate pleasure and good, forever, infinitely. That's what's going on. This is the meaning of life. So we have a guide here. Otherwise, uh, we're like lost down a rabbit hole, you know, if you get into spirituality like this, it's like, what's going on? And it's crazy stuff's going on. But uh, we have a guide. We have instructions. The Torah. Torah means instructions. And know that the Torah and the Kabbalah are one. Kabbalah is just receiving. That's what it means. It's receiving the hidden secrets of the Torah. And we learn in Kabbalah that the Torah is the blueprint of all creation. Everything is absolutely coded into it in one way or another. There's studies proving this. There'll be another video another time. There's skip codes, peer-reviewed published studies. It's coded mathematics. It's impossible. Top statistician, statistician in the world said no human being could have written this book. And so it's a very serious thing. Everything is being manifested from the Torah. And so this is our guide. This is how we can navigate in this creation and do what we got to do 
to fix everything and to get into this state, higher state of being. And it's not so much as just becoming more like God, that's a big part of it, but also everything was messed up when we had the original sin of eating that fruit from the tree, knowledge of good and evil. And then everything we learned in the Kabbalah, everything, uh, we, our soul splintered out, um, so many sparks of Kedusha, of holiness, went to the Klippot, into the evil, and we have to fix and elevate these sparks. And with the Torah, doing the mitzvot, learning Torah, and doing the mitzvot, these halachas, these laws that seemingly make no sense, I don't agree with that. What? That makes no sense to me. Why am I going to do that? Because we learn in the Kabbalah, it's doing these amazing things, and elevating sparks, and helping to fix the whole world. It does so much. When we do a little mitzvah, whatever it is, refraining from doing something we're not supposed to, or doing something that he wants us to, even if it, we don't agree with it, it's bringing down or in sof. Remember, we said in sof, the light of the infinite being. It brings it down to this world, brings down unity consciousness. It elevates sparks that are trapped, and it helps fix the world. And it brings down holiness and light onto your own soul and all of everybody's souls. So. That's what's going on here. That's what's happening. Are you guys enjoying the ride? Are you having a good time? Yeah. In our infinite sea of whatever this is, you're enjoying? Yeah. It's really interesting. Oh, I just realized they're muted too. Okay. I love ah! the secrets, bro. I love it all. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Keep making it rain, Sheffa. What do we have here? What's next? Yeah, when we and when we learn Torah like this, when we learn Kabbalah especially, you'll learn in my other video how to get prophecy from the Arizal and Sharach HaKodesh, that when you're learning Torah, especially learning serious Kabbalah, especially teaching it and spreading like this, it's creating very, very high lofty angels and bringing down very high amounts of Shefa, spiritual sustenance and light into the world, onto us. The Shefa can manifest in different ways. Like, uh, it'll come in whatever you need. So, it's like, uh, people say, why am I suffering? Why do I have, uh, I need healing. Why am I not being healed? I need money. Why am I not getting money? And But I don't feel like doing this stuff with the Torah and any of that, these mitzvot. It's like, God's just like, face palm, like, yo, if you do that, like, I'm trying to give you all the shefa right now. He's sending it down. And we're like, no, no, I don't want it. I'm blocking the shefa. No shefa for me. No, thank you. That's what you're saying when we don't keep the laws that we got to keep. Remember, for Jews, we got to keep the laws, uh, all those laws of the Torah and everything we're, that we got to keep today. But for non Jews, they just need to keep the seven Noahide laws and all the sub laws pertaining to those. And, and we're all one. And for anybody watching, know that the Jew, it's not like the Jews were saying we're better or anything. Remember, we're a tapestry and we're zoomed in. And there's different parts to the tapestry. And we're just one of those designs in tapestry. And everybody else is in this other design. We're in different designs. And we happen to be a certain design that's not very normal. And if you can tell, I'm not really that normal. <laughs> a lot of people that know me, they know I'm not really too normal. It's because I'm a Jew. And I'm tapping into my higher Jewish soul. When we keep Torah mitzvot. We go up in high in Kabbalah. Then you start receiving hard parts of your soul. And uh, you might get a little weird compared to the rest of the world. But really, the Jewish people were more like uh, Jedi's, something like that. The Matrix, people that are awake in the Matrix, Jedi's. What else are we like? It has got any input? What are we, shamans? We're like shamans. We're like wizards in Harry Potter. Wizards. Yeah. Wizard, are you going to say wizards? Yeah, wizards. Um, this is the real, like the stereotypical uh, Jew. Superheroes. So the Arizal, our great Kabbalists were like superheroes. If you and it, and don't think that only they could do that. I know how Christians love to say only Jesus could do that. Only he could walk in water and raise the dead. Nonsense. You're telling me you don't learn Torah when you tell me that. Because Jesus was just another Kabbalist rabbi. We're all able to do it. Yeah, they're all doing this. Everybody that's normal. That's normal. What do, they, what do you mean? He I wanted to tell me only he could do that stuff. Oh, I need to plug in my computer. Hold on. Hold on. So yeah, they're telling me only he could do that. <laughs> And that is crazy talk, man, because, plug in, because Eliyahu Anavi says it right there in the Tanakh, in the Old Testament, in the Bible, whatever you want to call it, in the scripture of God, says Eliyahu Anavi was raising the dead. Oh, okay, well, we have a Jewish Kabbalist there. Then they're like, oh, but then, no, but wait, 
Only he could, after he died, come back and then walk on water and stuff. Nope. Wrong. Because Eliyahu Navi felt like uh, not dying at all. He didn't get killed. He didn't die. He was just like, peace out. Whoop. Whoop, whoop, whoop. That's, that's Eliyahu Navi. He just kind of like, like went into fire, into light. He turned into light. And he has many other people and have witnessed it of great city. A lot, of, a lot of people are on spot. He just pops back whenever he feels like. He can make a body and he can make it look like whatever he wants. And he can look like himself and reveal himself to you. So he does that all the time. The Baal Shem Tov, the great Hasidic master, Rabbi Yisro ben Eliezer, may he rest in peace. He, um, he would walk on water just about every day. And he would teleport. Did Jesus teleport? I don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he did. But anyways. Uh, I'm a little busy right now. Unless you want to join the class. Oh. All right. All right. I'm going to talk quieter, okay? I'm going to talk quieter. Sorry. Oh, you woke him up. Yeah, yeah. My neighbor's trying to stick. All right. I'm going to talk quieter. Sorry. I was getting a little excited there. Okay. Another reason why to do it at seventy two. <laughs> yeah, that is. Well normally I don't I don't do it at night. I'll give you a key, bro. All right. I'll just give you a key. Alright, look. Now we're gonna get a little more intimate, guys. Okay. <laughs> we're ready. <laughs> okay. What is this? Anyways, just know that the Kabbalists, the real nature of Jewish people, we were um we were doing miracles. And it's the nature of every Jew to be able to do all of this. It's normal. That's the real normal state. How we are now is not normal. I know that. And I grew up, I didn't like Judaism at all. I wouldn't keep any of this stuff. I didn't know any of it. And I got into spirituality. And a lot of negative things were happening to me. And then I came here, I learned this, and it just all came together. That, oh, what they taught me in my Jewish school was not real Torah. It was like a taste of it, but te learning Torah without Kabbalah is like having a soul without a body. It's like having a body without a soul. That's what I was going to say. And when I learned this stuff, it's like, whoa, that's really cool. I say in one of my other videos, you can watch about why I started wearing a kippah. How I even before I got into this, I realized when I was meditating, I needed to cover my head. And you can check out that video. But, yeah, so if you learn real Torah and Kabbalah, it's like, whoa, I want to do that. I want to keep those laws. I want to do the mitzvot. Whoa, Shabbat does that? If I keep Shabbat right, I, I can see from one end of the universe to the other? Rabbi Nachman said that. That's pretty cool. And it's helping to fix the whole world just by me having fun and eating food and drinking really awesome wine. Whoa. Okay. Now tell me more about this Shabbat. What's that? What is this tefillin you're talking about? What do you mean that they're like Wi-Fi routers to God, to the universe? What do you mean they're changing my aura shown on, on camera? On the scientific cameras that can show that. That's crazy, man. You know. I, what, if I were to tell you? That I knew a guy one time who knew a guy who knew a guy whose roommate's dog's owner put on tefillin for the first time here in Sfat. And then he started having visions of Hebrew letters for a whole month. Hmm. Well, that's pretty nuts, man. I kind of want to try those on. What are those? Wait, his dog had prophecy or saw no, the letters? No, no, the stuff? owner, the owner, the dog's owner. <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. That was me. Not me. That story is actually about me. And how I first <laughs> put on tefillin. It wasn't Amanda. Amanda also has a dog. But she can't put on tefillin because she's a lady. And she has a built-in Wi-Fi system, we learned. That the Jewish women are so holy. They're like prophecies. They don't need these Wi-Fi routers. Or tzitzit to, to keep away evil things. Check out my other video about the secrets of tzitzit. Women don't need that stuff. They are just already there. But again, if we're not keeping the Torah and the mints phone, we're blocking that stuff. We're blocking it. Wow. Mikvah? What's that? Mikvah? Whoa. 
tell me more about the mikvah. That's so, the mikvah, that's a natural spring is the best. But also there's indoor ones that they make with rainwater that are cool. And we learned that when we go in the mikvah, it purifies us completely and allows us to receive that shepherd we talked about. All that spiritual abundance. So, um, and then it, and it purifies us. And we were learning before the class, a little preview, that in every moment, God is renewing all of creation, speaking it into existence constantly with the holy letters, everything, manifesting it like the matrix. This is the matrix. The code is the Hebrew letters. And we learned that if you wake up and say, oh, I didn't know that about the Torah and the commandments and stuff. I'm sorry I did all those bad things. I choose to be reborn right now. And in this moment, when you're being renewed, he's going to fix everything. So all of creation is constantly coming back, going in and out, in and out. He's going to fix everything and change all those sins into big mitzvahs. That's right. And you're going to elevate so many sparks all at once. And you can start all new. And you can get to these high levels and be like a shaman Jedi thing. <laughs> Is that a better way to describe us? Shaman Jedi things? You can be a, like a superhero. Like the Tzadikim. Tzadik, the righteous people. Tzadikim. Were like superheroes like they were saying. Teleporting. Flying. Here in Sfat. They were flying. Whoa. Is that too deep to talk about? Should I edit my video? That the Jews no. were flying around here 500 years ago. Well, they were. <laughs> and that's nothing compared to what they can do. And so, know that, and also know that Eliyahu and Novi was saying, and like telling the Aries all, all about how, know that any person can get Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, can get to these really high levels. Anybody, Jew or non-Jew, man, woman, doesn't matter. It all depends on your deeds, on your actions. Are you keeping the laws of God that you got to keep? If you're not Jewish, are you keeping those seven Noahide laws? Are you worshipping somebody and saying they're God? Are you killing people? Are you stealing? And if you're Jewish, are you not keeping Shabbat or kosher? In your life? Then um, you might have some problems. But if you keep it all, know that you can get to these high levels. You can be a tzaddik. You can fly. So, what? What? How much time were we at, Russell? Are there any comments there? You're very quiet over there. Any comments? Anything? Well, between the fact that I can't really speak very loudly and that there's a lot of background noise, I know your pain now. My my neighbor yelled at me if you hurt. So I understand. Yeah. <laughs> we both can't. Um, I don't. No, I don't think I have anything to comment. Although. I guess I had, you know, we've talked about this, like, in my journey into Judaism, like, I had a very similar experience where I felt very disconnected until I learned about the Kabbalah and, like, the, the more mystical meanings behind all the commandments and how I actually felt compelled to keep them, not out of, like, guilt, but out of excitement to kind of elevate a part of myself I didn't even know existed like, once I learned about this stuff, wow. so. Beautiful. Me too. Me too. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Okay. Hopefully everybody can see that. But don't judge anybody. Know that if somebody's doing something. All right. Can you mute yourself again, Russell? Yeah. Thank you. Um, we don't judge anybody. Even the more you learn of this stuff, the most important things we learn are fixing our character traits. If you really want to get to these high levels. You need to have, just love everybody in every moment and don't judge them. If you see them doing this or that, you think is wrong or annoying you, this or that, choose to see only the good in them. Say, oh, wow, look at it. We have this in common. I choose to see only that. Look at the good, this. Even if you don't see anything, just say, I know they're a spark of God too. And so I choose to see only that. And I love them. And I'm not going to judge them and pray for them instead. God has enough accusers and people judging negatively. He needs more lawyers. But Tzadikim knew this. And they're like our lawyers in heaven. And the great Tzadikim would look at somebody doing terrible sin and be like, oh, what a good guy. Look at this about him. That's what we need to try and do. See, doing that helps to fix the whole world. 
a big secret. What else do we have? So yeah, he has this system of government of everything, of this other side testing us, making us suffer, and know that the suffering, it's atoning for things that we did wrong. And that, uh, looks like we lost one person. Oh, no, she's still there, just turned off the camera. Blending into my shirt, so it looked like it was gone. <laughs> um, yeah, so, it's okay. <laughs> you can keep it off if you want. So, um, what was I saying? Yeah, so when we suffer, it's atoning for serious things that we've done wrong. I know that the word sin is just not such a good word. It's not like, you did a sin, you did something bad, and now you're going to get punished by the big, mean God. It's not like that. God only wants to do good to you. But the way it's set up, when we do something really bad, like, not even bad is not even a good word. When we do something out of... One second. Can you mute the camera, please? Thank you. Um... When we do something uh, that's out of harmony, let's say it like that. There's no, there's no sins or punishment or any of that stuff. That's just words. When we do something out of harmony from the source, from the emanator, from the infinite being that's in control, from the way he set it up, it just starts, uh, it manifests something bad, creates a lacking, creates a blemish. And the blemish needs to be fixed. So we get Tikkun in fixings. That's what's happening. And the, the, the fixings are terrible. They look like torture and death and stuff. Sickness, everything, any kind of suffering from stubbing your toe to the worst. That's a tikkun. It's either fixing something that you were chosen to fix something on the whole, even if you never did anything wrong for that. That's only for usually high up tzaddikim. Or for us, it's fixing stuff that we did in this lifetime or past lifetimes that was not so good. And that you know, and it could be past lifetimes, many past lifetimes, and it's this suffering fixes it. Now we learn, Kabbalah, you do not have to suffer. Actually, I mean, usually you end up suffering, even if you don't do anything wrong. Like we said you might be chosen to fix something for the whole, but you don't have to suffer so much. If you're, if you do tshuva, when you miss the mark, when you uh, go out of harmony and you create a blemish, if you say I'm sorry, like we said, it fixes it. So you don't need that terrible fixing. And really it's up to God. Maybe maybe you do need it anyways. <laughs> so but um, we know that you won't if you can fix everything in one lifetime, you don't have to keep reincarnating here. You don't have to keep on coming back. You can do it all in one shot, like David Melech, Daniel Hanavi, the prophet. Um, there's been people that have done it in one time. They didn't have to come back again. And Everything was fixed. And when they come in, down in the world, it's to help people. Give prophecy, help people do stuff. Help fix the world. And they're having fun up there. And this is important. People, how many of you guys think that, oh, I need to do all this because I don't want to suffer and go to Gehenna, hell. I want to go to Gan Eden, heaven. I want to have a good time up there. And that's the ultimate goal, to be infinitely in Gan Eden. Incorrect. This is not true. It's a temporary thing. Both the bad there and the good there are totally temporary. Why? Because the ultimate good is going to be right here. In Michayim Etim. That's resurrection of the dead. And the Ramchal talks about how we're, um, our bodies, you know, if we, they're messed up because of blemishes from breaking Torah, they have to go on the ground and rot in a certain amount of time. They, be, they are um, completely purified. Death purifies for the worst kind of sins. If you did shuba, that is. And, um, and then in the time to come, after Mashiach, the Messiah, son of David, is revealed, then everybody's going to be resurrected. And whatever body you fixed yourself in, you did shuba and kept Torah, and that's the body, I'll be resurrected. And it's much more complicated than that. Then and then the soul will have gotten rectified from doing all this stuff down here, going through all this craziness here. Soul gets rectified, and we get to the highest levels. And then once the soul is at the highest level, after having earned it, gotten to the highest level, it comes down, 
and it gets uh, put back in the body that's been purified and resurrected. And this is the goal. This is the old, and then we're going to be in a very high state of consciousness. And different Kabbalists, like Rabbi Yitzhak of Akum, talk about how <laughs> in the calculated, it's a long process to talk about, but we'll be living probably around 80 million years or so, give or take. And you could actually live forever if you want, probably, or not. And we'll be in such a high state of being that we can't even understand that right now. We're going to be receiving this pleasure of being one with God. So know that. Know that. Right? But you, you, want, you want a nice spot in the waiting room up there. Well, until that happens, why not? Hang out in Gan Eden. Get a nice penthouse next to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. That'd be cool. Eat some fruit. Why not? I'd like to do that. That sounds fun. <laughs> but it sounds better than Gehinnom. If you die, God forbid, if you don't do tshuva for breaking the commandments before you die, like so many people, then you got to get fixed outside of the body over there. That's not fun. You want the fixings here. People that learn Kabbalah when they hurt, get hurt and this and that, they're sick. They're like, oh, da -da, thank you. Thank you. Because it's, you want to suffer here and not there. Because we learn in Gehinnom, it's the fires of Gehinnom are like 60 times more painful than any pain in this world, something like that. It's very not a fun experience to be burning in there for like a year. It's, it seems like forever. Outside of time, it's uh, extremely bad. And there's worse punishments than that. If uh, it's really bad stuff, we didn't do Chuvan before we died, then we can't go into Gehinnom. We can, they'll kick us out. You gotta wander the earth. And these people try to get out, they possess people, it's possession stories, and other thing. But it's not fun. We don't want to do that. So it's good to do truth here and try our best here. Like you don't need a not everybody needs to be a chassid. Somebody going above the letter of the law and, and behind the cabal and everything. It's not for everybody. But at least the basic things, if you're a Jew, you know, um everybody should keep Shabbat and keep kosher. And it's fun. And it's not hard, especially if you're in Israel. And Women need to go to the mikvah and keep laza nida in the married. That's that's one of the basic things for women. For men, they need to wear tefillin, the Wi-Fi routers. And these are basics. I was told from a good source that's uh, like basics of having a good time over there, getting gotten in. But why not try to get get up a level, man? I want to get in the penthouse. I want to have that really good papaya fruit tree right outside the window. <laughs> but so we should, you know. You shouldn't do it for reward. You don't do it for reward. Mm -mm. That's that's a lower level. That's good. That's, that's a lower level. High level is I want to do it because I want to be one with God. Because that's the real secret. I want to be one with God. I want to give. I want to serve selflessly. And be one with God. That's the real pleasure. Being in service of God. Revelation of God. And I want to help other people. I want to fix the world. The Arizal talks about in Shar Gilgal and Gates Reincarnation when all the Jewish if all the Jewish people did Shuba and the other side would disappear, the evil side, and there'd be no more suffering. We'd have the redemption immediately. Whoa. That's crazy, man. When I read that I was like, <laughs> Mm-hmm. I gotta again step up my game with this stuff. I was not perfect before, but I'm still not, but man, I gotta try. I don't want the world to not suffer anymore. That'd be nice. And he actually learned in the Kabbalah that <laughs> all of the evil and suffering is actually coming from, uh, it's coming from all of our sins, I think of all people, but mainly from the Jewish people. We're really feeding it when we're breaking Torah. So when we do Chuba and keep, keep Torah, it cuts them off. And they just go out. They don't have anything to live from anymore, any more sustenance. What happens? They go away. We actually learned that if all the Jewish people kept just one Shabbat, one Shabbat, Mashiach would be revealed and the whole world would be fixed forever. We actually learned that if all the Jewish people were all white and kept in, on Shabbat, that would also do it. So, some of you may have seen me on Shabbat wearing white. It's fun. You know? It's nice. It's like uh, we're like Jedis over here. Feels so good. Yeah. So, you actually can feel a difference. Why? Well, check out my other video about the Ben Ishchai and the Arizal talking about how, depending on the type of clothing, we have a surrounding light and energy coming off of it that keeps away evil entities. And 
if we uh, when we break Torah, it leaves us. And they come in and they grip to us and suck our energy and poison our thoughts and such. But so when you wear certain types of clothes, you can actually feel it. When you wear all white, clean clothes with a hood, and it's Shabbat in Sfat, Israel. Oh man, oh man, that feels nice. So, <laughs> Um, yeah, what, how are we doing on time, guys? It's, oh, exactly one hour and two minutes. Any questions right now? Questions, questions, well, questions. Um, Anything. Can we go, can we fly right now? Yeah, when yeah. are we going to fly again? So, if we're really keeping tour and working hard then the only thing that's blocking you from being able to fly is your doubt. The Baal Shem Tov said that man would walk on water every day. I take him very seriously. Love him. And he said, the only thing that's blocking you from doing all these things is your doubt. Suffolk. you got to remember we talked about in the Purim video, if you guys saw that, my Purim video where I wear a funny hat. And I said that a Amalek, which is the nation we need to kill, that's always trying to kill the Jews, that the Nazis were. I get proof in that video about them. They were a mullet. And a mullet has the same number value. Word, gematria, the Hebrew letters all have number values. It has the same number value as suffix, doubt. So when God says we need to kill a mullet, we have to kill doubt. Because we're all one. We need to kill that part within us. Kill the doubt. Kill a mullet. Kill the doubt. And say, I have faith in God. He's poor. I have faith in myself. I have faith anything is possible. Anything is possible. If I wanted to, I could fly and do anything. There's the only limit is your own limit with your own doubts. So that's what's blocking us from flying, from healing, from doing whatever you're talking about, whatever miracles. It's the, it's the doubt. And this is a very high level to want to do miracles and stuff like that. It should be shame Shemaim for the, for the sake of serving God, doing good things for others, um, not for our own ego. And... Uh, know that you can, but you need to have absolutely zero shred of doubt in your subconscious, which takes a lot of work to change your subconscious. Because you can say, oh, I saw that miracle. I saw a bunch of miracles. I believe it's possible. Why am I not able to do anything? Well, combination of not keeping Torah right and also doubt, subconscious doubt. You say, oh, I believe I can do that. And in your subconscious, you're like, no, nah, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's only in movies. No way. So you got to program your subconscious by constantly working at this stuff every day. Meditation, contemplation, learning Torah. Reprogram your mind from all the nonsense that it was programmed. you got to, you know, people, they brainwash you, but we got to wash our brains and start over. We don't know anything. we got to start from the basics, go into the books. I go into the Kabbalah. I don't believe that anybody's talking about in the world. Nobody knows anything about health, spirituality, about fixing the world nothing I don't either I'm, I don't know anything nothing we don't we don't know anything so I go into the books from the, from the prophets of God and I see what does God have to say he knows something he knows everything and so the tzaddikim are nullified to God like the Arizal and Eliyahu and Nebi, all of them they were nullified the prophets therefore Moshe Rabbeinu Moses so God was flowing through them if you can nullify your ego you really grow higher in purity and torment this foe, then God can flow through you. The Orient Sof will speak right out of your mouth. And every Jew we learn was getting prophecy back in the day. And we learn that they will go back to having prophecy again one day. So it's only our, our, uh, only our, um, our doubt, our breaking Torah, and negativity, hatred, senseless hatred. We need to fix all that. We need to have total faith in God, Torah. We need to be pure. We need to um, love everybody and everything. Don't judge anybody. <clears throat> judge everybody favorably. See the only the good in them. Mizrach <clears throat> Hashem. Messiah will be revealed soon. And we can all unite in peace and love. Rebuild that third temple. And do what we got to do. It'll be, it, when we do the stuff with the temple, it'll fix everything very quickly. And we won't need to do so many of these mitzvahs anymore. They're very temporary too. A lot of the, the holidays and the mitz the commandments very temporary just to fix us and everything and then we'll just be in like Purim, Purim mode, Hanukkah mode, Shabbat mode all the time having fun eating fruit and glowing and such may it be soon any other questions nah. 
So, um, as, as you guys may know, I don't, uh, what? It's like the latest I've seen you awake in a long time. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't really sleep much last night. That's why I might be acting a little nuts right now. But, and I'm waking up again in about five hours because I prayed mates at dawn. I tried to do that, sunrise. And it's really good to do that. It's an auspicious time to be awake and talk to God. And especially to do the set prayers with the tefillin. Especially wearing the double tefillin that I got. Two at the same time. That's like that's like high speed internet, man. Mm. I got like... Did you, did you get the tefillin? Yeah, you didn't see my new tefillin? No. So I got it from a special guy that writes them. Here, yeah, he, me. Yeah, he, uh, he writes only for certain people. He writes for the Baba Sali's family, the Abkhazers. And through a series of special events, God made sure I got these. And they are, man, they're taking me up. I'm flying. I'm seeing miracles constantly. Oh, thank God. Man, it's good to be a Jew in Israel and doing this stuff. Because life is good, man. Man, can life I, is good. Can I try your high-speed yeah. internet? Yeah, yeah, sure. Just uh, prepare right, yourself. On. Prepare yourself. Okay. I will. Right. Given the way the seventy two he gives you is to fill. <laughs> so guys, as you know, I don't charge my classes. I don't think anybody should be kept from learning Torah um and because of money or anything, but if anyone wants to give a donation, my website is healingwithtruth.com and I have a donation button at the bottom. No pressure at all if anyone wants to support me on my mission to keep on doing this, learning this stuff, spreading this stuff and how, uniting the world, fixing the world. Let's do that. And I love you guys. And until next time. All right. Love you too. Love you too. Bye. Bye.